Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. Well, it is, uh, <clears throat> it is, uh, 8 hours and 32 minutes until the 22nd day of <clears throat> November, uh, 2021. Anyways, we're getting a bit of a slow start. I'm just sort of waking up. It's a pit stop once again. Uh, the burnout is still here. <laughs> so, I'm taking a couple sick days off to a certain degree. And so, you just... The transitions are kind of equal to a pit stop. Otherwise, I'm sleeping. I did do the observation last night. I did was able to sort of fix up my observatory. Took the uh, records down. That way I should have taken down. Uh, in other words... Uh, the logs were written, the journals were written last night. It was quite interesting because the, 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 the atmosphere was moving rather rather quickly. Uh, there was a lot of sort of fluctuation. And uh, I was able to use the aircraft in order to determine the altitude, the approximate altitude of the uh, of the clouds, and some of the clouds were actually very low because you could hear the planes, but you couldn't see them. So that tells you that the uh, clouds were rather low because I'm talking about the the two there are two sets of planes you can you can watch the lowest uh, aircraft are the ones on the approach to Pearson Airport. Uh, which is to the west of us, and they come in across where I where I am, and head on over to Pearson. So they come in at a lower at a lower altitude. <clears throat> I think this is as low as you're going to get the commercial aircraft. And so you can determine if they're if they're still in the clouds and they're not low, they're on approach. Then you've got a pretty low uh, ceiling in terms of where your clouds are at. Uh, but that last that didn't last too long, and then uh, there was a period for maybe about a half hour, uh, I think 45 minutes around 11.30, where the skies were completely clear. And you could see planes that at altitude, the, the after a plane picks out, takes off, they go up to altitude, and... Uh, they're pretty high up there, they're, you know. And you can see planes like that, so. And that lasted for about uh, another half hour, and then it started clouding over again, so. But I came in around midnight, and just sort of, that, that was sort of the end of the evening, and uh, began doing the YouTube stroll. Uh, Allie wasn't in, uh, Allie wasn't in the, uh, Remember, she wasn't really much in the alley vlogs uh, today, but that happens. You know, things kind of fall off, and uh, now I'm on to uh, I'm watching uh, Carly Reese is going to be next. I'm going to have a bowl of cereal. That's going to be my pit stop. I'm going to have uh, uh, frosted flakes. I, I still love my cereals very much, though. So. Anyways, this, this is my nerdy background. This is my existence as a nerd. Uh, and I'm in my Kauai tea house, of course. So, uh, this is where I exist. So, onwards and upwards. I'll see you in the next transition. Well, it is uh, 19 hours and 57 minutes. Into the 22nd day of uh, November of 20th uh, Stu Ionectario. Oh. Just getting, well, I got going about a half hour ago. Got up, milled around, uh, did some of the checking that I needed to do. Upgraded, there was an, an up necessary upgrade to the phone. This device that I use for filming. Uh, so, I did those things, and now I have a packet, two packages open. 
one came in from from uh, Amazon. This is how I do my drinks. People don't believe it, but the thing is, I live. I only spend forty five dollars a week on food. This includes my snacks or whatever. So I always rely on discounts and stuff like that. So this is how I do my drinks, particularly my junk drinks. I make my own tea as well. I have my own uh, tea mill and so on and so forth. So I, I can brew my own teas and typically the uh, the Chinese teas, the her herbal teas. Uh, but this is my junk drinks. This is actually pretty good. The Skittles is really good. Uh, this one packet... One of these packets inside of here, and this 40 here, will fill up, will sweeten a liter of water. So, this is one packet to a liter, a liter of water. So, get that liter bottle out that you have in terms of your water bottle. Put this in here, and you've now got a good, uh, well, drink in terms of your, your, uh, if you like fruit punch and stuff like that. I mix, I mix the iced tea with, the, with the, uh, uh, with the, with the Skittles, uh, let me put the box over there. Uh, I also get something from uh, from from uh, China, my usual shopping malls in China. Because again, I don't have a lot of money, and so there's no option for me to sort of say, "Oh well, you know, I could have gotten X, Y, and Z if only." Because for me, there is no if, if only, because I don't have the money. It's that simple. You know, I love the work that I'm doing, which, which is open exploration. I talked about that last night. This is open exploration, but there's a lot of risks involved. And there's not a lot of money. You, I mean, I could have gone to DARPA. I had an opportunity to go, you know, get money from DARPA. But there is a catch to the DARPA money. And the compromise that I would have had to make... Uh, working for DARPA was simply not acceptable. Uh, I do not want to be developing weapons. I don't want to be uh, having the stuff I use uh, that I develop being used for weapons. And so the choice now, that means the choice is that means you have to now go it alone. No one's going to come in and help you. You don't have any extra funds. And you got to get creative about your finances. Well, I found these phones, and I found the camera on the phones to be pretty good. And I'm, I'm filming. In, I'm filming now. Uh, people see the vlogs from back here. They can see all the objects, all my, all my stuffed animals. And instead of paying, instead of paying thirteen hundred dollars for an Apple iPhone, which has a good camera on it, or a Samsung. I paid three hundred, including tax and shipping. So I saved myself a thousand dollars, which went to other things. Like living is right now my neck is hurting. My neck. when I get up because my rest isn't my sleep isn't restful. I I toss and turn a lot. Uh, it bothers my neck, and so I got this um, neck massager. I gotta sort of see if it fits. I got. Have I got it right? No, I got to have it upside down. I got this. I want to see if it fits. That's the what I'm going to do now. See if it fits and if it fits in the yay for that. I have to charge it up. I have to charge it up. So I'm going to just see if it fits. If it fits, then yay. I'll go I'll put this on the charger and then go from there. Ugh. I hate when these boxes are hard to open. <laughs> we been trying to have a conversation and trying to open the box, but it's not open. It doesn't want to open. Anyway, as I started my uh, YouTube stroll, um, going down the uh, 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 YouTube, the, the, that path, the um, the path that I've set out. And so right now I'm starting off with the Yowie Vlogs. I just finished the Yowie Vlogs. Okay, so this, this, this is it. This is what it looks like. Let's get it out of this bag. And Nelly wasn't in it. Wasn't in the vlog again. You know, I you know I I understand things are difficult. They're not as easy to always work with things than as one would expect. 
and you do get, in some cases, it, uh, you could have depression over not being able to succeed at the things you want to succeed. So, here it is. It's got um, a nice little uh, attachment here for the control things. It doesn't have a remote control, but it does have the charger with it. So I'm going to put this on, put it from, from the behind the neck. Question, does it fit? It has to go under my hoodie. Okay, get the hair out of the way. I think it fits sufficiently because I got a, I have a, a, a rather thick neck. You know, it, it, all the all the pads are touching where they need to be touching, so that's good. So now it's just a matter of charging it up and sort of seeing how it works. So it fits. Uh, I spent twenty dollars on this, and for me, it's money worth, well worth spent. Uh, let's see how it works out uh, in terms of. Uh, massaging my neck, massaging my shoulders, uh, so that uh, I can reduce the amount of pain I'm in. So let's open this up. Let's see. I've got the. Uh, I've got this. Here's the charging cable. A lot of times they put things inside the packaging, though. The plastic packaging here. Here we go. And inside the plastic packaging are these two uh, uh, sort of pads connectors and they're pads so I can do I can put this on my on my uh, actually mid back or lower back you can do uh, the uh, lumbar support lumbar uh, massage with this so it's got everything it's, it's I think this is a very good purchase I'm happy with it so I'm gonna take this uh, take this off and put put it on the charging stand get it charged and we'll go from there. Anyways, uh, I'm probably going outside in about a half hour and doing the rest of the, uh, doing uh, the observation work. It is the 23rd of November. It is 15 hours and three, six minutes into the day. Oh, anyways, we've got a very quick, very quick package opening to do. Uh, let me see if I can get it out. I pre-opened it. It's one of the, it's one of the products I need for a uh, project, and this is it here. It's a small mixer, just two channels. That's all. That's all I need because what I'm looking at is over here and there is a seven band equalizer the equalizer will uh, allow me to shape the sound that comes out of it uh, for better control sometimes it's very difficult when you're doing stuff that's live and you don't want to spend a lot of money on this stuff you need uh, an equalizer to help shape the wave uh, how the basically how the sound sounds and so that's what that does I was expecting it coming in, come, to come in on Thursday but it's here now today so yay for that anyways I will see you uh, uh, probably later on tonight I'm gonna see if I do another uh, observational vlo uh, observation vlog uh, tonight it was cold up last night so I gotta find warmer warmer clothes Particularly for the hands, for the gloves. Well, I might, uh, was, might as well do this now because we are into the 24th day of November. <coughs> Once again, it's frigid. It's about uh, 28, 29 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I'm where I'm sitting. So I've got my hoodie on. I've got my... And I'm properly fueled up. I tried to come out uh, last night uh, on the 23rd. You know, the, uh, the from the 22nd to the 23rd. So I sit here over the, the brink of the day. So I was out here uh, just around uh, 10 o'clock on the 23rd. It's now uh, 39 minutes into the into the 24th day of November, 
2021. There's our time and date stamp. But this is a vlog, and a vlog in terms of a scientific journal, or even in your diary, includes a time and date. So this is our time and date stamp. Uh, but I tried to do it the, the previous night, but unless you have enough fuel in your body, enough food in your body, uh, your body cannot produce the heat needed to stay warm outside. Right now, I've got enough food in my body to maintain and keep the heat. And so what it fundamentally means to me is that uh, I now have enough fuel to keep myself warm as long as I keep the hoodie up because you lose a lot of heat through your head. So it's not <laughs> it the, just the, the Gnosis vlog. It has nothing to do with the Illuminati. <laughs> it has to do that it's cold out here. It's freezing cold. You can't see my breath, but I can see my breath. Uh, <laughs> but typically, it's like a, the the it's like a it's like a, my, my my body is like a sauna. And there's a lot of heat coming out of the mouth. Uh, of course, you don't see this in warmer temperature because uh, the air does not produce the clouds. The, the air is still there. The moisture coming out, out of the, the the steam coming out of the body is always there, but just it's not visible in the warmer temperatures. It's only visible now. But it's not apparently it's not. And I've seen the the video now, and it's not visible on the video. So the video is not picking up picking this up. I am. I I see it, but the uh, the video doesn't. And then, you know, Lionel's been off for the last couple of days. I'll see what happens to Lionel, uh, with Lionel, of uh, Lionel Nation. But I've been watching uh, Yvette Carnell. Uh, she was the other one. She was the other component of uh, the Democrats. I watch. Uh, I watched and then watched. I followed her, basically from uh, from the first election of Donald Trump in 2016. I followed her all the way to current. Followed her into the last election, 2020. Uh, she is the one. If you ever, if you ever hear, hear people talking about reparations, well, she is the one who got that started. She was the one who was behind a large chunk of the reparations. But what happens is that they simply use the rhetoric, use the ideas, created a cause, it BLM, and then when, when they were done with her, they simply dumped, dumped and dropped her, and she ended up on her own. And now she's she's uh, finally coming back again. Uh, she's been around for like two, three months. Uh, but she had been gone for oh, almost six months. I think she had been on almost six, six months that she was gone. Basically, a little bit after, a little bit after inauguration, she was gone, and now it's let's see. Uh, she came. I noticed her coming back and came back. I think it was September, October. She came back. So, anyways, at least she's back. Uh, she is a person who is outspoken. She has her own mind. She does. See, this is how do you choose these these pundits? And it's simple. Are they telling you what they think? Or are they following a particular line or script? This is what line like. All these other people, you know, these other groups, even Joe Rogan and stuff like that, they follow a script. They're simply repeating lines after line. They're, they're a meme, they're a trope. This is what happens with, with a, a large chunk of the Democrat pundits, is they simply repeat the party line. Well, she doesn't do that. She, does, she goes in and picks a particular issue. Uh, with the various different things that go on within sort of the democratic standards, and I'm talking about the Democrats as the, the democratic as a Democrat party, not uh, democratic in terms of the values of being a Democrat in terms of the ideal of democracy. Uh, and that does have to be sort of clarified because the Democrats, the social left, because there is a social right known as the Nazis have a tendency to uh, redefine things <laughs> so that things that you thought were wrong are no longer wrong because, well, we reimagined re 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 it. <laughs> so this is kind of the way things go. It's, you know, when you start reimagining things uh, and you consider, you do this because you consider the entire world to be a concept and nothing more than a concept. There is no reality. And this is the nature of humanism, the nature of humanism. Is that it does away with God and so God, uh, the creation? And this is Lionel's issues because Lionel is a modernist. Oh well, yeah, well, well, that's, that's amazing. And modernist, so he's you know he's he's like the with the uh, with the humanists of today, like the uh, 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 2021. Well, no, because modernism ended 
in 1945. Modernism is an old form of science that believed that everything in everything could be known by the mind, that the mind was the superior, was superior element, and it could discern and logically deal with everything. This is uh, Sherlock Holmes. This is Hercule Poirot uh, from Agatha Christie. These were people who understood the infallibility of logic and mathematics. Science was king, the ultimate truth. This ended with the atomic bomb, which everyone thought was impossible. They had done the mathematics. They had done the work. Oh, no, 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 no. The atomic bomb was not possible. You open the paper, uh, you know, 1945, you see the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I thought this was impossible. Well, <laughs> guess it was wrong. So in comes in postmodernism that says everything is simply a concept, it's an illusion, and that's it. Well, that was that's sort of be the beginning of the end of Lionel's world. They kind of pretended in the academia for a while now, up until about uh, just well, well, until the woke came around. The woke is the end of the modernist and the beginning of the postmodernist. Uh, this can be seen with uh, Ram Dass and uh, Timothy Leary. This is the the sort of the the flag that produces the turning moment. Is is that? It's sort of the end of the nineteen sixties uh, was the end point and transition away from Freud and of Freud particularly from the Freudian world into a postmodernist world of chaos. And this is sort of how these things have evolved. And you can sort of follow the evolution of this. There is a path you can actually follow. Again, these things are not open in textbooks. You're not going to find them in a textbook. You have to go piece these things together. And it's going to take you a while to sort of peruse through the libraries and, and, and find the bits and pieces of this. So it's not an easy thing to do, unless, of course, you're willing to sit down and do all the library. And I said, well, the reason why I do, the reason why I have my... Uh, my, my toys and my, my my cartoons the way I do. You know, I'm always watching cartoons. My mom asked, my, is your cartoons all day long? Yeah. And so what you couldn't really understand it's, and it's hard to understand that if you're in the library all day long perusing through this and that and you're spending hours doing that and it's mind numbing, you need to have something that to pull your mind away briefly before you go back to it. The cartoons, the thing that's on day on, you know, hour after hour all day long is your edge of reality. It prevents you from spinning off into no insanity. It keeps you somewhat in a lucid world. I mean, my dad gets off the you know off the computer when he's doing doing his research. He's a researcher as well. Sort of, you know, the apple doesn't necessarily fall far from the tree. And he he comes off the computer and he's completely dazed. Uh, you see the same thing here. Right? I do a lot of studying. What happens? I forget what day it is. <laughs> what time it is. And so what happens is that these things, these, this work is disorienting. The cartoons help you sort of keep a, a, a an edge on things. Or a, uh, a, well, the edges of a puzzle to keep you sort of somewhat within uh, the present or the, or, the, or the current environment. So you have some degree of what we'll call for me, uh, a a routine. This is my routine, uh, the mundane that keeps you relatively uh, sane. <laughs> relatively sane because that's what it's relatively sane. Otherwise, your mind would be completely off, and it'd be very difficult to sort of pull back. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, I think that's it for now, and I will see you tomorrow. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School.